No, uh, monks can't flip stalwarts. What's the plan? Uh, the plan is we get a bounty hunter <laughs> because they're cool. Um, we just get rent armor focus from either like later on we want it from uh, focus mutator, but until we find that we take it from either warlord preferably, which we will pick up, or a berserker if we have to, and that will let us deal with armor pretty well for the first while anyways and then uh, we're going more into the stunning route like we started with double monks we're trying some stunning stuff and probably go with a lethal blow on our dps or something to actually deal with necros uh, most necros are stunnable so we can stun set up some stuns on them and then we can probably lethal blow them for triple damage and hopefully that's enough damage for us to to power through them, even without the really high scaling guy, guys. Nice fetish. He, what's the relic? Um, it's immortal. So, it's the ones that the end boss has. If you take lethal damage, you instead survive and go invincible until it's your turn again. Then you heal for double your max health over two turns. Once per battle. Uh, Angel Spec will always trigger before Immortal. So if you have both, first you get Angel Spec dropped. Then if those are gone, then Immortal will drop. Hmm. Can we do this though? Maybe. Let's see. Yeah, we should be. Should be able to. Alright. Let's see it. Mm -hmm. Fortress fight is always spread out here for the oil. The oil splash is around one person like this. And if he was standing next to him, then it was very likely he would have gotten hit by oil too. And also you want to have light foot before you have before you attack the fortresses. Because you can do stuff like this, and nobody took damage from the oil. I like to call it oil dancing. Because dancing's fun. Mm, maybe this is enough to pull them. And here it just splashes around. It hits nobody else, and then you can walk out. Always make sure you have um, a second. Hmm. Always make sure you have uh, one, one tile between, but also stay close enough so you can dance around. And this is a bad spot to stand on because they will shoot him, and then all three tiles will be covered in oil, and he will be standing in the middle, and there's no way out but to like walk out. It would be different for him because he's a monk, but he still takes the 15%. You. I want you. Okay. Hmm. Always make sure that you stand somewhere where uh, not more than two tiles are covered. Two is questionable and sometimes you get surrounded. But if you have three tiles you get surrounded for sure. And now if I would walk out I would have to take 15 again. Also, the more tiles that are, that are open, if you have two tiles open, you don't take any damage if the turner lines up. Because he will go in and swap him and go out. And nobody will get hurt. This is a bad spot to stand on. Can we do this? Yeah. Then you can do stuff like this. And just avoid the oil damage as much as possible. Yeah, this was bad. But I was kind of trapped in here, right? But there you can see three tiles were covered next to me. 
and now it splashes and it doesn't have like uh, enough space uh, like it always covers like three tiles or something and if three tiles are covered already you're totally surrounded now he has to take 30% damage um, but luckily we have a monk and he can do this take the 15 onto himself and flip him out so he doesn't have to take it because he was getting low already and he is the one who has to stand in their face quite a bit more one, two, three, four. Make sure to not stand in this range. And of course, we d we keep dancing like this. Break this up a bit so we don't get totally covered in oil. And we take the freebie. He comes in like this. We take this. I have to go in though, so. He cannot backstab. <laughs> Everyone engaged in melee, like those, will not be uh, thrown. Like, no oil will come onto people engaged in melee. So he is the only, only oil target right now. So if I, would, if I were to go here and swap and hit him, then I would get an extra hit, but I would also guarantee that the guy I swap out uh, him in this case would get oil thrown into ho onto him and I would be right next to him so this would be covered in oil and I would take damage from the oil for sure so I don't want to do this I want to stand somewhere here mm, out of range mm, here and now he, his only target will be me and he will throw oil at me and I don't cover my exit here and I don't get like completely surrounded by oil which would be pretty bad just want to get this archer guy down because he will move if we don't get him down here let's just check if they have bash here they don't have bash here they only have shield ally so they cannot bash me into pits I take 15 here, but the oil is in a much better position, in a much more manageable position for me. And he can go over and flip him. He can go here and bash him. So he could go here and slow him, but then he would get shot at by the archer, which we don't want. Let's just give him another option here. And like, maybe he even goes here and attacks him, which would be preferable. But also like just control him because if he goes here he's engaged in melee and he will be over here so it's just uh, controlling those two tiles from being flanked by him after we bash him in there on our next turn and now that he is gone he is no longer engaged in melee and it was between him and him from all tiles like being hit by oil and it it hit him and this is what we tried to avoid the previous turn by him not getting into there. Because this is really bad. I, he has to take a lot of damage now. We will slip him in because for him it doesn't matter. He's a monk and he will uh, jump and flip anyways. So he doesn't have to walk through this and this way he saves 15%. Mm, we will go here I think here we will go here we will get hit by this guy anyways this is out of range of archers and if we go here we get covered in oil again and this way we only tank his hit and we are out of his range he goes first he goes here and then he's engaged he will not go through the oil uh he might go here and hit this monk but that's fine but let's just make sure he doesn't get super hard focused and like prevent him from coming in and then he will get hit by this guy, but there will be no oil. Uh, let's just make sure we have full stamina, so we can uh, just jump and flip. Uh, he's enraged there, huh? Hmm. Unfortunate. That makes it easy? Well... It makes it easy as long as you just stand around and don't have to do anything. 
it's hard once you are engaged in melee like this and have to there's a, a lot of things to keep track of you have to keep track of the archers to not, not stand in their fire um, like the enemies coming in uh, the position you want them to be in to swap them into pits and throw them into pits um, and then also like ramming guys coming in here like this and you also have to always keep in mind who is the lowest HP on your team because they will go after him like he, he got shot by the archer because he was the only one in range and suddenly he was lower HP than my assassin which meant he was no longer going for my assassin but for my for my footman which I didn't calculate for so the main thing the main error like the main uh, how do you say it the main error I, I made I guess like the main thing I did wrong last turn was not calculate that he will get shot by the archer and that changed his behavior too and it just um, as long as you just stand there and have like three guys and like you dance around oil it's no problem as soon as there's engagement like this there are a lot of things to keep track of if you want to play it perfectly and that makes it so hard for me to play perfectly because it's just too much stuff at once most of the time so let's see he takes 15%, which is 51, uh, that's 76 or something, so he would die to all right now. So we would have to flip him out, we have enough stamina to do so. We could also swap the assassin in if you really wanted to, which would make it so that we can, we could bash him in. The problem with that is that he will shoot him again, which would mean we would have to go with our Vormong to we our Vormong would have to go here to flip him out before this archer goes and one shots him. So we would go here, we would flip him, then he would go here and he would swap him. So he doesn't take all damage. Then he would back off and land him. And then he would go over and flip him. He would have to go through the oil because he does not have the stamina to jump and flip this next turn. Because he did it last turn and he only has 72 or something. So this would work, but afterwards we would have to back out. I think nothing else can touch us. And he would be blocked here, he could not go. I think this will work out. We take a free hit I think? No, we, we keep our pretty. Holy moly. So he has only 44 stamina and jumping is 50 and flipping is 50. So he does not have enough stamina to do this. So he needs to actually walk here and then flip them. And he was engaged here. Like those two tiles were engagement tiles for him. So if he moves into them, he cannot move further, which is why he was safe to stand there because he was blocking for him. He could only go around like this but he only had 3 movement. If he had 4 movement, he would have been able to reach him. But this way, there is no way. So he was safe here. And this is where we have to get out, because everyone is super low. But we have all our turns now, and he cannot reach us. So he only has to take one more oil tile, and then we're out, and then we reset. And we killed 5 out of the 9, I think. And the next one should be fairly easy. And we're gone. Nice. That was a fairly interesting last turn. Alright, we do it again with full health bars, but with only 4 enemies. And we should be able to do it here. Hmm. We have double monks to jump up here. And to get in there. Uh, we deal with them first, I guess. So he goes pulling and they go dancing. They probably come anyways, right? Because we killed so many of them. Hmm, don't come. Okay. That's annoying. Uh, 
I cannot go in here because then I would have to go out again through the oil. And now I have three tiles uh, next to me, which are covered, which is the death pit and the two barricades, which means I only have three tiles next to me. That makes it highly likely that he will shoot oil at me again. Except I took turn him. Hey, nice. Right. Time to move. He goes on three. Let's wait here one turn. Fucking hell. <laughs> right, at the monk pool, I guess. Because it's all covered in oil now and we need to jump over. Let the monk do the pool. Jesus. Do this so he can jump over step so he doesn't take more damage. Oh, now they're coming, okay. Flip him away from this because he would get covered again. This is a fairly high, like, high value skill you can learn, dancing around oil, because it lets you take fortresses, which are fairly high value, and not all of them, but most of them. And this just increases your fortress percentage by quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Fuck, it was out of stem. So this way we are all engaged. And you can see it's his next turn. But he will not throw anything. Because we all stand next to an enemy. I will deliberately stand next to him. So he had his turn after. But he skipped his turn. But as soon as we kill him, we have to spread out again. Which is now. Because now we are not engaged anymore and he's instantly firing again. And we stand like this because we had we were going to kill him and we didn't want to stand next to each other so we just spread out like in this triangle so after he dies we had our positioning back here he can just uh, flip him Um, yo, what's up, Mangalesi? <laughs> Where did these guys get the old from? <laughs> Let me just catch up on chat real quick. I talked a lot. So, they decided to come this guy. To come because this guy has 55%. I'm not sure why they decided to come. I have no idea. Like, uh, this is just, this is still a mystery to me. Uh, most of the time they come because, uh, we killed a lot of their friends and they come instantly and I thought we killed more than half of them and they would come but they didn't so I'm not a hundred percent on what angles them and what doesn't why ban bounty hunter x because um, we played a run and he carried our ass super hard and he's super busted uh, the last run we won was because mainly well because of two reasons three reasons uh, the main reason was the bounty hunter because he was super strong like disgusting he just ran around and one shot people basically uh, the other reason was Aegis spam and the other one was shaman so we had a priest who just spammed Aegis like no tomorrow and we had a shaman who kept him topped off so he gets spam more Aegis and then uh, yeah 
and that was what made us win the run. And after that we banned it for the next one, for this challenge run, because that's kind of what we do. <laughs> um, after we win the run and played with something for, for a while, um, I just want to change my tactics up and force me into different stuff. So I don't play the same thing all the time because it's boring for me. I'm not really interested in that. And since he carried our last run, he's back now. And we're forced to find something else that works very well. Because he's broken, yeah. Yes, most of the people. If someone has man splitting, it's usually man splitting over focus. You can only do it if you got a full focus bar, right? But he has man splitter every turn. <laughs> Which is just uh, way too fast in. You can just man split every turn and you give him 120 stamina and then he has a 2.5 uh, multiplier on every attack basically. And what that means is in the late game he just goes around and one shots people. It doesn't matter what the person is. You give him flash heater, you give him a, a damage relic and he has siphon power by default so he gets 25% more damage by default and he just one shot stuff even if they have armor it doesn't matter hmm. took a fortress more broken than a baby's great axe? Mm, probably maybe nah about the same level of broken. One boss just randomly killed my best guy with devil's fate. <laughs> yeah, uh, those are the map two bosses. They all have devil's back. You have to be careful with those. Broken enough for him to not play it exactly. I don't know where we start, so he could only get four levels and only. <laughs> and used the thought of using shaman on priest. Yeah, it's a really cool combo. The shaman is really strong. If you can ever get your hands on a shaman, then you should try him. He lets you do really crazy stuff. Yeah, can't, uh, siphon power is 25% extra. Exactly, and X is strong against armor with 300% shadow. So he's just a really strong unit against everything all around. And if he gets to a certain tipping point, he one shot stuff. And at the end, you spend all your alcohol always on your um, highest DPS because all the alcohol you spend raises your average level anyways and the enemy scales with your average uh, level and you want it on the people who do the most you don't want it on like an, a monk or a footman at the end early on it's nice to level them because they get their skills and stuff but past a certain point like at level 20 or something when it's uh, towards the end game, towards the final fight you want to spend your alcohol on on damage dealers, right? And that is where he gets just over the edge. Even before that, he just gets so much bonus strength compared to the rest of your group because you overlevel him. And he just has multipliers, like a lot more multipliers than other people have with man splitting every turn and with his siphon, siphon power because Siphon Power applies to his space damage and then it gets multiplied again. So uh, stuff on him just means more than on everyone else and eventually he just gets this critical mass where he one shot stuff. His damage scaling is off the charts, exactly. Is what the Scavenger X-Man aspires to become one day. I'm sure the Scavenger X-Man will never be like that. <laughs> but only against armor by being a vampire. Yeah, I mean he was useful, right? <laughs> Alright, what do we have? A warrior. So a warrior is basically a worse blood knight and I don't really want a blood knight in my group. <laughs> so I would, or I would also have to pay for the warrior, <laughs> which is just not a thing. The two lists we have and the rest is nice I guess. So we sell Duelist. We want the Life Essence. We don't have a target for Lifestone yet. Lifestone you don't want to use on static stuff. 
this is a static mutator and it only gives you uh, max HP upgrades. So if I were to do this, it would only get me like max HP. The ability would not change like at all. So you want to spend it on stuff that scales with levels, which I don't have any right now. But it would be, he doesn't have revitalize yet, so I can show it. It would be stuff like revitalize, which gives you a bigger heal with each level. Or stuff like Flesh Eater, which gives you more damage and more healing with, with each mutated level. This is the stuff you want to spend lifestones on. You don't want to spend it just for health. That's a bad idea. Uh, there's also the consideration that you want to spend it on your strongest one, or maybe the rarest one you have. But they always have to be scaling. Never spend this on something that isn't scaling. So, since we don't have anything yet, we just uh, sit on the lifestone for now and don't use it. But we will find something eventually. Even after Soma carried you yesterday? <laughs> well, I mean, he did stuff and things, but he didn't solo carry. <laughs> There's a collapsed mine. That's a fight we cannot back out of. If yeah, and this is not a good fight to take. This is Valdo prisoners. So, prisoners which are defended by Valdo knights. Which is really sketchy. So, there are two non no good fights. I think we back out of here and go east. Just because this one we have to take and we are not sure we can take it. And this one is not valuable. And there's more, but we don't see it. But there's also more here. So let's go here. There's another... It's a fortress, wow. Not a village. Uh, take another fortress then? Sure. It's this layout. Um, <laughs> we have a footman again. You know what this means. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's do it. Do we have the sustain for this? Maybe we should still do it in two turns, right? Because we don't have sustain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's actually do it in two. Let's not get greedy here. Fortress is about uh, gaining medicine, not losing medicine, right? So. That's unfortunate turn order. Sometimes you cannot do anything about the order like this. You just shot the first guy, like, who had his turn after. And that was just unlucky. Nothing to be done about it. Once again. How much did he take? He took 200 from him? Yeah, sounds about right. So, what's 15% of it? 15% is 83 something. So, it's probably better to go through the oil than to go here. Like, we can go here, swap, and go here, but then we get shot at next turn. What's his next timeline? 33 and minus. 19 plus 25 from waiting so we actually two turn him so we can go here you can always check your own timeline uh, if you hover over your guy you see uh, hp damage and then you see your current timeline it's a hundred because it's your turn currently uh, whoever reaches a hundred timeline gets his turn and then right next to it you see next which means uh, your timeline for your next turn 
So now your timeline is 100, and once you end your turn, uh, you will sink down to 19, and then you will climb up the timeline again. However, if you if you end your turn, you get 25 on the timeline. So I figured his timeline is 33, as you can see, if you hover over him, and you hover over mine, and you see timeline 19. But if you wait, eating means skipping this turn, you need to gain stamina and speed is increased by 25, resulting in new timeline value of 35. It even says it for you. It's not a one-to-one -one translation, but it's it has diminishing returns, right? So you cannot take infinite turns. But my new timeline value will be 35, and his timeline value is 33. This is how I know that I will two-turn him. So he will not go here and shoot me, but I will take my turn and run away, which is a big difference. Which is why I took this uh, route here, which is why I was okay with that. So as you can see, the turn order is 8 and 9. So I go before him again, and I go over, and he cannot shoot me. Yesterday he shot like that three times. Ah, you mean the barrel guy? <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate, but it happens. So, we can choose to take the oil, or we can choose to take this. He goes up to here, 1, 2, 3, 4. Or up to here, 1, 2, 3, 4. I think he cannot shoot us here. I might be wrong. It's close. Hang on. What we can do is swap him one out. And he should not be able to shoot him. Before. That should be one out of range, I think. Yeah, goes around, okay. And we don't have a lot of room to move around here. Alright, the rest is moving, I guess. But we're dancing pretty well. As you can see, we're, we've been here for a lot of turns, and we only took like a couple, a couple of hits. His hit was from the archer pulling, which could not be avoided, and we only took like some damage on him, which we couldn't avoid either. But all the other damage from the oil we didn't take, just because we're moving around. Usually, I would play this fight differently. I would rush up here and take this high ground um, and defend here and here. But uh, once you take this high ground, you're pretty stuck here and you have to be able to beat them in melee. And I don't feel comfortable because we don't have uh, we don't have great damage in melee outside of his bleeding. And his bleeding is only works after like waiting one turn or uh, after backstabbing. So. I felt like we didn't have the damage to do this in one swoop because they have a lot of armor and eventually they would wear us down and someone would die and we cannot back out here anymore. So I made like I didn't do my usual strategy but I made like a judgment call to uh, do it in two turns like in two attempts which means we just pull them down and we kill a couple of them especially this annoying guy and then come back. And we go on him now. Yeah, strong versus stunned. Most useful trait ever. <laughs> Alright. Got him. He was very popular. Everyone loved him. Everyone is so... Uh, so panicked that he's dead now. So we picked the right target, I guess. 
Hmm. Let's go here. Strong against range? Yeah, probably. Uh, we know the... We know him. Yeah, it's unlocked, I think. No, it's not unlocked. Was he the one? Hmm. I'm pretty sure he is strong versus stun. Uh, I think we saw it earlier already. Already. Hmm. Much panic. What's up, Ball Dropper? You only four people at the moment? Yeah, you only four people. Uh, it's uh, at the start of the run. Uh, we started with Monk, Assassin, Monk, and we picked up the Footman from uh, uh, from Enemy Fortification Quest, where we could choose, and the Footman was the only one we could choose, so we took him. Footman isn't bad. He goes in 4, he goes in 2. He's coming in soonish. Mm. As you can see, he didn't shoot at the guy all in melee, but he shot at the guy behind. Which is still kinda of bad. Hang on. Hardcore taking a fortress with four. We took a fortress before this. This is our second fortress. We also did the first fortress without injuries. So we could go up here and just throw him down, which wouldn't be bad. And we need to be mindful of him coming in. Hmm. He goes before. I don't think we can swap him out here. He needs assistance. He cannot get hit again for 91. Then he's getting really low. Hmm. But there's no way to get him out. He has to take all damage, I think. Ah, it's kind of rough. Let's see where he goes next turn. He goes here. One, two, three, four. We want to be standing here, I think. Nah. He will try to go after the assassin. So he has to stay out of range of the archer. So he has to stay somewhere over here. I think we have to do this. And flip him. And then we dance here. Something like this. So Just so he can stay safe. He would die otherwise, most likely. And then... He comes in, but he cannot reach, so we can dance here again and take a free attack. He just diverts them, throw him into oil, then jump back off. So we just have some more room to work with here, which is one of the uses of monks, which is not often utilized, I feel like. So we dance here again and we need to deal with them. How much stamina? You have full stamina. So if I jump here, I spend 90 if I jump and attack. So 90, that's minus 80. That's 70 minus 16, that's 60, 52. So next turn we can still jump and attack if you want, or jump and flip, which is important. Let's do it.
We want to dance again. Who does you hit here? 364. You can always check who is your lowest HP target. And if he has the choice, he will always go for the lowest HP. So he will go for the assassin here. Which means... If we go here, he will go up here. This is giving him a max range shot. If he go here, he might actually go here too. Just because this is high ground. He doesn't have to stay here, but this is safer. But this is closer to the action. We cannot dance here to, uh, right now. Because he will shoot him and then he doesn't have to move in all the way. Like he can just stand back and shoot. And we cannot reach with him. We need him to walk in so the monk can reach him and take him out, I think. Let's go here. I think he still goes up here and takes a max range shot. Eh, not a max range, but takes a shot. Yeah, he went up here. And because he bashed him through, um, and he lost a lot of HP, he was suddenly the lowest HP target. And then he shot him. So now is when we go back to the retreat zone. And we take him with us. We take him out here. And then we go. And... Does he get stun locked here? Four. He goes on three. He should survive, maybe. One, two, three. Should be fine, right? Ah. Doesn't look like we can take him out, though. Ah. Got an injury. So, got it a little bit too close there. He goes in 8, he goes in 7. Hmm. That's a pact. Could you? Uh, he gets chain slowed. That was my bad. Okay. Monk taunts enemies by shouting profanities at them, doesn't even need this call. <laughs> Seven is banned, yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Revenant run yesterday made it further than I thought. <laughs> Fortress you do for medicine not to lose medicine. Who would say something like that? I certainly would never state something like that, would I? <laughs> so, we don't give them medicine yet. Because it's entirely likely that we lose them. And then we just lost medicine too. So, we see if they survive this fight. And then, and then we check, like, <laughs> then we give them medicine basically. So this is much easier now. Uh, we don't have an archer shooting at us. We have more HP. We have we don't have an archer standing outside our, our fortress up here once we get up there. So we can just rush here. There shouldn't be anything in our way anymore. Outside of oil of course, but you know. We do this actually. This is disabled now because we stand next to it. So, as soon as you stand next to the Olga, he doesn't throw anymore. You don't have to kill it. And this is the cool mechanic here, which lets you ram the catapult because ram goes through everything and you can ram the catapult over. Which means this tal is now blocked and <clears throat> they cannot go through here. They cannot swap with it, they cannot do anything. Uh, which basically means you only have one tile to defend here and we all have Lightfoot. 
which lets us 4v1 people who will come up here. And we took out their ranged units, which means it's a pure melee fight now. And they can't do anything. We just have to make sure to stand next to the catapult at all times, or it will start firing again. That's a cool trick we discovered by accident, when I was just trying to get up here with a footman and I was like, yes, I can charge the the, gar the oil guy, just to get in range and like stop him from shooting. And then I realized like not even he is immune to, to ramming. <laughs> and then you could just ram him over and just seal this tile off entirely. <laughs> and this is just a one tile, so he can stand here. I have the high ground. And he cannot do anything. <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it was an accident that we discovered that. So we could have done this the first time around too, but the thing was, there was still an archer here and he would shoot at us and he would take a lot of our HP. And there was still an archer here, who most of the time would just run around trying to find a path and not be an issue, but there's the possibility he goes over here and shoots at us and we cannot touch him. Like if he would stand here and shoot at us, we couldn't do anything about him. So it's just much safer to not wipe if you take them out beforehand. or. Of course have archers of your own who can take them out. Uh, and also we didn't have uh, any sustain and we still don't have, but like without losing much HP from the archer and stuff, I feel much more comfortable doing it. It was just unfortunate that we lost uh, two people in the first attempt. We just overstayed a little bit. Um, the footman, the footman here, the injury was mostly because I, I didn't expect him to bash me through the oil. Also, the oil came after my turn, so I couldn't see the second oil tile yet. But him bashing me through and putting him low enough for the archer to actually shoot him and not my assassin was really bad, and he died from that. And the second injury was just from my monk overstaying and getting slowed down so much that he couldn't take his turn jumping back down. I was a bit too aggressive with him, and I had an oversight here, and there was two injuries. Otherwise, uh, I think the strategy itself was solid. It wasn't bad. With Congo line, yeah. So they only have this. Um, they only have this tile to come up, and they are desperately trying to find a find a spot. And whenever this is uh, this is blocked. They try to go around here and go down. And whenever it's open, they turn around and want to go in again. They get all messed up if they don't have a path available. So you learned from your mistake? That's how you lost Sky by Archer Tisha? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like last time, uh, last time I did this, there was an archer here, and he two shot my assassin. Like we were like, ah, oh, we can run up here and we can do this and stuff, and we can take this last archer out, right? No problem. And then we ran up here, and he shot my assassin once for half his health, and or like a little bit less than half his health, I guess. And then um, we ran up more, and he was still in range, and we two shot him. Like, the second shot just killed him, straight up. <laughs> that was unfortunate. <coughs> so this will take a while. Mainly because we don't have much damage against armor, and they take a while to come in and stuff. But it's still worthwhile, I guess. We took two injuries for probably two or three medicine, uh, a lifestone, 
uh, life essence. And hopefully we will get uh, like a warlord to recruit. I would take a warlord right now. Or a hammerman. I would also recruit a hammerman. I would not recruit any other units. Mainly because spearman is banned and marksman is banned. And axeman is actually awful. And warrior is a verse uh, blood knight. Which we already don't want in our team. <laughs> Good night, Bon. <laughs> I'm used to it. This X Man, he's not worth it. Yeah, exactly. So, if you want to be in this run, let me know. We named the last run, but the last run died after me taking one bad fight against Bounty Hunters. And. Yeah, we took one bad fight against Bounty Hunters and died. We could not retreat because we were in a village. And then, like, five people got injured, one died, and Urtok was injured. And there were three bounty hunters left. And then we went back in and tried to uh, try to get revenge on them. And there was one X guy left with a man splitter. And I was like, no problem. I have like this 1,000 health dude standing in front of him. There's no way he will be he will reach me. And then there was like an oversight behind, like there was a hidden path behind, like a wall or something. I did not see. And I had like this guy in front of him, right? He just walked past and man split my Urtok and I was dead. <laughs> like straight up dead. <laughs> there was nothing to do anymore. So that's how we lost this, the last run. Just to one f bad fight against bounty hunters and then me being blind. So if you want any character here, just let me know and I will win it. I think I deserve Immortal Monk because I never died last turn. <laughs> you never die in my playthroughs. Never once did I see anyone named Pistol die. <laughs> because I always closed my eyes. He should maybe get some experience into her. Huh? But of course I swapped badly and. I can start killing this now too. There are only two people left. Bonked. Wow, look at the confuses we have. He's gonna be so confused, he has no idea what's going on anymore. Look at him. All those question marks above his head. He's like, what? Who are you again? What am I doing here? Why are we fighting? We should, we should make peace. Look at him. How confused he looks. <laughs> it doesn't even stack. Void focus three turns. <laughs> Hey, patience. You didn't have patience yet? Did you have patience? You don't have patience either because we picked him up. But you have patience, right? Yeah. Let's give him patience. Let's wait one turn. Let's give him one more patience. Hmm, guess not. <laughs> That's why I have a special command. Exactly. <laughs> I think you gave permanent brain damage to that guy. <laughs> I think he doesn't care anymore after he's dead. 
But yeah, most likely. Get a stunning bow for our monks. And immobilizing crits could be nice. I want one. And bleeding, we have one, right? Do we take another one? Yeah, we're about to, uh, to pick up some more life essence from the fortress. So we're okay. Pick up 135 more. And that's the X-Men we never take. He even expects pay. He should pay us to join our team. Like, honestly. He should pay us to be part of, like, a real team. Which carries him. And retaliate, which is not worth it. But it's 55 essence. And lifestyle. And two medicine. So we are overall even on medicine from doing this. Um, we're down some trillium because we retreated and we took two days. And we got life essence, life stone, and retaliate in return. So overall, it's pretty worth it. We also had a shot at recruiting someone. But it could have been even better. He wants to take some stem. And this is where he wants to respect. Because he just picked up murdering sense. And level 7 is when you want to respect your assassin. Who have 121 stamina. To attack four times. Uh, two times with swift hands, and then he gets another attack, and then two times with swift hands, which is 121 stamina. And the rest goes into vitality because you just took all your points out of vitality. And he doesn't need strength, anyways, because he kills with bleeding and four attacks. So he just wants vitality for now. And the agility breakpoint stays for long term. <clears throat> respect him, respect him. He came with a strange uh, sort of attribute, so we just respect him into more health. I think 66 is the breakpoint. He can attack once, which is 40 stamina, and engaging strike twice, which is 25. This is 65, and then he has one more stamina. And he can deny two movements if you want him to. And the rest in vitality. So now we have two left on sitting around. We want to pick up something really soon. And he gets his stunning blow. Uh, 